Hi there, welcome back to the Win a Pageant Podcast. I'm your coach, Alicia Darby. Now in today's episode, we've got the famous Lou Sierra. Lou Sierra is a supermodel and runway coach. She works with individual pageant contestants and she goes to the Miss USA and Miss Universe pageants in order to work with all of the contestants as a whole to prepare them before they step out onto that stage. And you know, she shares in her story from the very beginning that her real gift is helping you to create an individual walk for just you so that you're not just like a cookie cutter of everybody else. It's, it's really, really epic the way that she is able to teach and train women to move and, and step into their own power. So she gets into that in this episode. And another thing you're gonna learn in this episode is the difference between a pageant walk and a runway walk and how to really understand those separately so that when you step onto a pageant stage, you're able to sell yourself in a different way than you would as a runway model. So really incredible. Also, oh my gosh, this is great. At the end, she tells this lovely and empowering story about something that she did that made all the difference in her career. There's so many knowledge nuggets. She talks about different looks. She even, I hope that you're watching this on YouTube. If not, go to winapageant.com slash YouTube. Check out this episode there because she even gives some movement tips and shares like facial expressions that are just gonna radically change your entire way that you present yourself on stage. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Lou Sierra. Welcome to the show, Lou. It is such a pleasure having you here. Yes. Be happy to be here. Yes. Happy to be here. Oh, it's so fun. So for people who do not know you yet, they are probably living under a rock. <laughs> but if you would just share a little bit about your backstory, how you got into working with pageant women, and then what you're up to today. Sure. Um, I am still presently a model, but as an ex-supermodel, I am with Elite Model Management. I've modeled for more than 30 years professionally. I've lived in Paris, Italy, Germany, and Tokyo. I have worked for such designers as Givenchy, Yves Saint Laurent. Um, in the United States, I was known as the Bob Mackie model. If you look at Bob Mackie, um, I've worked for Bill Blass. I've worked for Armani. I have several pictures. Armani wouldn't let anyone do my makeup until he told them exactly what to do, and then he would touch up. Wow. So I have great things like that um, from my background. And one day, the Universe organization was trying to figure out how can we make the girls look more like professional models, that when you turn on the show, you accidentally think you're watching a fashion show. And they interviewed me. I um, had a very close girlfriend with my modeling agency that would get the callbacks but wouldn't land the jobs, and she was gorgeous. And one day she said, Lou, you got to help me. I don't know why I'm not landing the jobs. Mm -hmm. After helping her, she landed almost every job that season, and our agent said, what did you do differently? And she said, Lou worked with me. Wow. And the agent said, Lou, we have a proposition. We want you to work with our new girls at the agency, but these are the same girls you're going to be competing against. Mm -hmm. Do you mind? I said, not at all. Mm -hmm. Because I thoroughly believe I could teach you to turn all day mm -hmm. and you'll never turn like me. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why I can teach girls in the pageants the same turns but when they add their own flavor, it looks totally different. So I interview with the Universe organization. The ratings start to do well. Mr. Trump said, yes, let's go with her. And I've been working for them now almost 10 years for Miss USA and Miss Universe. Yeah, it's such a cool, what a great story too to hear. And I'm sure you have a ton of interesting and hilarious stories from really? your work as a runway model too, like back in the day. Oh really my good. gosh, yeah. Wow. So. Tell me this because I've always kind of wondered this, and now I got a supermodel right in front of me and I could ask her, what is the difference between, if any, a runway style walk and a pageant walk? The, the difference is in a pageant, you're selling yourself. On a runway, I'm selling a garment. I dare not sell myself. Mm -hmm. Nothing about me should be on that runway. It's all about the garment. How do I make the garment look best? A model is a salesperson. That's why very often pageant girls say, why can't I model? And I'm like, because you can't sell. <laughs> Models have nothing to do with being beautiful. If I showed you some models during fashion week, just walking down the street with no makeup, you wouldn't believe me. 
But when they get on the stage, they sell the garment. So the walk per se may not be different. Mm. The walk, your walk is your walk. Mm. If a girl has larger hips, Mm. she should take shorter steps because when you open your step, your hip moves more. Mm. If you have more like a boy body, you should take longer steps because when they open, your hips are going to move more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So your walk is your walk. Yeah. It, that, that, that shouldn't change. And every girl doesn't have the same walk. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to runway and pageantry, pageantry, you sell you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. I, I remember at the expo, I first met you at the Beauty Brand Believe Expo last year. And mm-hmm. I was just like, oh my gosh, what you were describing um, about the details like that, like what you just shared right there is gold to women. Like, hey, look, think of your own body. What do we need to accentuate? What do we need to kind of timber down a bit? And the way that you actually demonstrated it at the expo, I was like, oh my gosh. And, and- it upsets me so much when coaches yeah. teach the same walk yes. to every girl. Yeah. That upsets me. And at Universe, it's really funny. After the preliminary competition, mm-hmm. I'll get at least two girls who come up separately and say, why do some girls walk the same? And I have to let them mm-hmm. answer. I say, why do you think? Yeah. They had the same coach. You got it. Now, yeah. I taught, last year I taught 12 girls separately before okay. they got to Miss Universe. Yeah. And when I tell this same girl, I coach 12 girls, pick them out. <laughs> and her face goes, really? Mm. Because I took each girl's body and personality. I'm going to give you a really quick example. Yeah, great. The girl in front of me, mm. her number one smile, and number one smile is your biggest smile with teeth. Okay. Her number one smile might light up the room. My number one smile is my worst look Mm. because I have all gum. When I smile, my biggest smile, it looks like this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So someone not knowing and coming to rehearsals might say, that girl in front of you is lighting up the room with her number one smile, Mm -hmm. but she can't flirt. Her Uh. flirt makes her uncomfortable, but my flirt is killer. Yeah. So for me to do her, Mm -hmm. she's going to beat me. Mm -hmm. She's going to beat me if I go to her ballpark and try Mm -hmm. to do my number one smile the most. Mm -hmm. That's her thing. You have to know your thing and your strengths. Yeah. I love Lou, show me the flirt. Can you show me the face, the flirt that you nail? There there are three teen appropriate flirts. Okay. A teen should never do a miss flirt, which is the number one reason my teens don't win. Um, They go on stage and they try to be too sexy, which, by the way, is why they took away swimsuit at Teen USA. Not because they wanted the girls to be more fit. They wanted to stress we need a teen to be relatable to teens. Mm -hmm. And we need the parent of a teen to say, baby, that's something I think we should do. Not, I don't want you looking like that girl. (laughs) Look at her. So there are three teen appropriate flirts. And let me just add, there are some flirts that girls have that are uniquely theirs. Mm -hmm. I have a girl that can do something with an eyebrow that you can't teach. But the three teen flirts are chin to shoulder when I turn. Oh, okay. Oh, that is good. Yeah. Inhaling and looking at the audience with wide eyes and almost giggling. And the other one would be putting my head to the side as I turn, a tilt to the head. Mm -hmm. It'd be when I'm walking in a circle, anything like that. Yeah. Now, to a miss flirt, again, that is individual. Our flirt Mm -hmm. is not going to be the same. Some girls, the eyes get smaller Mm -hmm. and the lips might be open. Some girls, the eyes get wider and the lips are closed. Mm. Everyone has a different one. But to achieve your flirt, you should not be thinking anything sexy. Mm. You should not Mm. be thinking about a man. You should not be thinking about anything like that. You should be thinking power. Mm. Power. 
your thoughts should be saying, I am your winner. Mm -hmm. Conceit says I'm the best in this room, but high self-esteem says no one deserves it more. Mm -hmm. And I'm winning this for all the girls that no one thought could ever win. That's who I'm winning it for. Now, judges, I'm going to need you to get this right and make me Miss USA because I'm going to Miss Universe. And let's not share the one job the other girls have here because their only job is to give me time to change clothes. I am your. I that's what you said. <laughs> oh my gosh, I so love that. <laughs> you must be saying the entire time you walk. Yeah. You can't be saying, I hate my thighs. I hate my mm. thighs. Why did I choose this dress? Oh my God, look at her dress. Look, why is she in front of me? She's like six feet tall. She's a model. Oh my God. The girl in front of me has done the pageant five times. Oh my God. Oh my God. Why is yeah. she? You can't be thinking that. Totally. Yeah. Because honestly, you're asking strangers to think more of you than you mm. think of yourself. Mm. And winning a pageant is a job. And your job is to lift self esteem in other girls. Mm. How dare you think I should give you a job as a judge when you don't even think you should have it? Mm. Wow. Wow, Lou, so good. And you're and you're right. It's definitely we can easily, it's so easy to get caught up in judgment and comparison when our eyes are everywhere else except for on us and our purpose. Yeah. Wow. So how do you train that in the women that you work with? What is your strategy or your skill or what is it that there you do? There are a lot of basic things. First of all, do not go on the internet studying other girls. Mm. I have dropped clients because I'm not going to have you here and I'm trying to build your self-esteem mm. and you're studying other girls. Before they even get to the pageant, you have already put an S on their chest. When they walk in, you are fly. They are flying in in a cape and they're superwoman. Yeah. Everything they do, look at her, look at her. Because you studied her not knowing when she was on the internet saying, can you believe my grandmother made me wear this awful dress? Mm -hmm. What she really wanted you to see was her accepting another one of her many awards. <laughs> yeah. When she went on the internet and said, my boyfriend is such a pig. He ate 10 hot dogs yesterday. Mm -hmm. What she really wanted you to see was her standing next to him. Now they're on the beach uh -huh. and she's in a bikini and her body. Oh my God. That's <laughs> what she really wanted you to see. Yeah, yeah. So you are being silly enough to do exactly what she wants. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, when we're standing in line about to go on stage, long before we get on stage, we're not talking to other girls. We are definitely, oh my God, I love your dress. I love your dress too. Did you get it on sale? <laughs> no, it's a couture. My girls, yeah. long before they get on stage, all they're doing is standing in line, doing every turn mm -hmm. they're going to do on stage. Mm -hmm. And they're talking out loud. Lou, when you get on stage, do a slimming pose, mm. judges, 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 walk. We're going to go from a flirt face and swimsuit to our number one smile. We get to the end. We're going to do a bang, bang, bang. Mm. When we do the bang, 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 let our face change. We're going to mm. come back. We're going to end legs open, turn around, half turn. <sighs> Slow your breathing down. Let's do it again. Lou, mm. when you come out, we're going to be in a slimming pose. That's yeah. what my girls are doing. Mm -hmm. So they've done it 10 times before they ever get on the stage. Yeah. I don't understand the logic of, oh, my God, I love, and I love you. Oh, my God, you're so cool. <laughs> oh, got to go, got to go. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then they come off stage, and they always say the same thing. Oh, I wish I could do it again. Mm. My girls don't say that because they did it 10 to 15 yeah. times before they ever got on the stage. And they don't have fear telling girls around them, guys, I'm really sorry, but I got to insist you keep it down just a little. Then they go back mm. to talking to themselves. Mm. They don't even wait for a response yep. because yeah. they want to do it 10 times before they get on stage. Right. And another girl will see them. And at first, maybe 
Did she just tell us to be quiet? Yeah. Then they notice what my girl is doing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it takes about 15 seconds before they say, you know what, guys, I'll talk to you later, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Those are some of the things. Don't study other girls. Mm -hmm. Don't. It's of no use. Don't. Mm -hmm. At USA and Universe, my girls don't even watch the teleprompter to see the other girl walking. Yeah. What right. good does it do for you to see a girl do excellent or trip? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if you see another girl trip, you don't do this. Yay. Your brain goes to, why does she trip? Is the floor slippery? Is there something? <laughs> right. That's where your brain goes. Yes. Yeah. So don't study other girls. Don't want to be other girls. And whatever you do, don't see another girl do something incredible and decide you're going to do it for the first time <laughs> and think you're going to outscore her. The name of pageantry is not getting the same score. Mm. It's outscoring someone. Mm -hmm. How could you possibly outscore me in doing something? One, I've been doing a long time. Two, I did it so well that you liked it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Oh my gosh, so true. Wow. And you know, I've recently, I don't know if you're familiar with Brendan Bouchard. He's sort of like a Tony Robbins, high performance mm -hmm. coach. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he recently released a new book and talks about one of the habits of high performers is mm -hmm. self-talk in the third person. Mm -hmm. So the way that you just described, Lou, here's what we're going to do. We're going to step out there. I'm going to go like this. Like, and, and not even I. It's like you are going to do this. You talk, speaking to the self in the third person. So it's fascinating that you say that that even applies backstage in pageantry, you know, doing the same Absolutely. types of principles. I'm about to go out and, and, and yeah. compete for, for something I want, yes. any job I want. Why would I be talking to you right before I have to go in yeah. to any kind of interview? Right. Why would I be doing that? I would be reviewing my resume, reviewing what I know about the job reviewing what I'll give on and what I won't give in on. I'd be questions for me. If they say, do you have any questions? That's what I would be reviewing. I wouldn't be telling you that your outfit looks incredible. Where did you get it from? Was it on sale? Do you know if they make it to order? I wouldn't yeah. be doing that right. on any job interview. Yes, right. Do you think that that comes, because you know, we laugh because it's so true and we've seen it so many times in the women that we work with and backstage and and I've experienced myself in pageantry. And do you think that that is a nervous factor that women are doing that? Or is it a defense mechanism? Or is it just simply they don't know any better? Where do you think that it comes It could be from? all of the above. Yeah. No, it can be all of the above. They, they're trying to calm their nerves. When people are talking to you, you want to be polite and speak yeah. back. It's natural curiosity, everybody. It, it's all of the above. There's yeah. no one. Yeah, some people do it because they're nervous. Some mm. people do it because they want to psych you out right yeah. before you go out. They'll say mm. something to the effect of, for the record, your dress is really pretty. I mean, it mm. was pretty like eight seasons ago when everybody <laughs> wore it. But it's still really pretty on you, too. Oh, totally. Yes. Yeah. Did you try to lose weight and your thighs are just like that? <laughs> and you can't help it. But anyway, girl, you look good. Go kill them. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're right. That conversation, that chitter chatter, anything that takes you off of your purpose, your what you're there for, your mission and stuff, all of that is is absolutely a distraction. Yeah. So in your experience in working with the Miss USA contestants, both before they get there and also all of them and Miss Universe contestants, I mean, you've seen everybody, the best of the best come through. Mm -hmm. You've seen so many winners get selected from the group. Is mm -hmm. there something that you notice that is a standout from the beginning when you first meet girls at the beginning of the rehearsal? Is there sort of an it factor that stands out to you as something that the winners got, that those that, if they don't have this, There, it's there are some things that the winners have in common, but I want you to know that we never know because interview, mm. let me say it again. <laughs> interview is the most important. Yeah. Not a six pack, not mm -hmm. the tightest butt, not the, the, the highest breast. Mm -hmm. Not the biggest lips, not the longest hair extensions, not the darkest suntan, not the most expensive dress, not the shoes matching the dress. Interview. Miss USA and Miss Universe speak 
She does not do fashion week. She may be invited to do one show or two shows. She does not model. We have sponsors. She doesn't do any of that. And girls have decided if I'm pretty and I can walk my butt off, then I should win, even though I can't answer a simple question, why you? Mm -hmm. If your answer to why you sounds this way, because I'm an excellent role model, I would represent this organization to the best of my ability. And everything that makes me, me, makes me the person right for this job. And I do know it's a job. I live self-esteem. I'm relatable. I'm approachable. I think that's why I'm your winner. That girl told us absolutely nothing about herself. Now listen to the girl that followed her. Why are you our winner? Graduating high school with a 4.0, I got a full scholarship to the University of Miami for pre-med, which by the way, I turned it down. People said I was crazy, but I decided to follow my passion. So I sit before you right now, a top professional model with three agencies who now speaks two languages working on her third that has incorporated her name and owns two properties. Mm -hmm. When it comes to giving back, I am all about volunteering. I volunteer to teach Sunday school. I volunteer at a homeless shelter on Valentine's Day because I think that's a sad day not to have someone that loves. And most important, I volunteer to help feed the hundred neediest families during the Christmas holidays. I am in charge of apples are for girls and oranges are for boys. I'm your winner because I'm going to tell every little girl, take your education seriously. Even if you go into the arts, you have to be a businesswoman. I'm going to tell every little girl, follow your passion. Don't choose a job for finances. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing I'm going to tell every little girl, giving back means your hand is open. But remember, that's also the only way you can receive. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm your winner. Yeah. Ah, you see how much I know about the second girl? Yes. When oh. you use words like role model, relatable, that 50 girls, I know nothing about you. I'm going to label you immediately. Maybe fake is fake. I don't know. But you're still at a zero. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're still at a zero. Maybe a four if your outfit said something really unique. Yeah. But getting a six in interview, if the highest is a 10, you are never going to win. I don't care mm -hmm. if you get a 10 in swimsuit and a 10 in evening gown. Mm -hmm. You are always trying to play catch up. Yes. Interview is the most important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lou, you're warming that's my heart with I that. <laughs> that's why I teach interview as well as yeah, walking. That's brilliant. And you're right. It is absolutely. And, and it's still, you know, obviously you can't be have a great interview and walk on a stage and be all kinds of crazy in your walk either, yes. you know. Yes. They go hand in hand, but the right. job calls. And let me just say yeah. this. We have excellent interview coaches out there. Yeah. There are some I highly recommend, but I don't like a girl to go to one coach. Mm. Go to different ones yeah. and get different opinions on an answer. Find one that fits for you because right. different mm -hmm. coaches have different ways of teaching. Absolutely. So find one that fits and don't be afraid to try out others. Do a 30 minute session and say, wow, I never thought about that. Yes. I never thought about that. Exactly. I have girls that come to me that go to interview coaches and don't want to do interview with me. But do you mm. know they never leave without my top five questions oh. that I think are highly likely to yeah. be asked? And yeah. mothers will say, "You're." I'm just in awe of you yeah. that my daughter won't do interview with you. But mm -hmm. you don't let her leave without saying, baby, high on my list right now. What is your what is your opinion on our president's use of social media? Mm. Baby, should historical monuments be removed out of public places? Mm -hmm. Sweetheart, mm -hmm. what should a group of people do that feels as if their government or officials are against them? Mm -hmm. If not Hillary Clinton. Who would you like to see be our first female president and why? These are questions right. that are really right. high on my list this month. Yeah. And there is yeah. no girl that's coming to walking that didn't walk away with those. Because right. if you don't win, it won't be because I didn't do my best to help you. Mm -hmm. I would have done every single possible thing. And when you do interview with me, do you know you can say, Lou, let me hear your answer? <laughs> 
You can say, Lou, I want to write it down and get back to you. Yeah. Or you can right now talk about it and we make your answer great. Mm-hmm. But interview is the most important. So true. hundred percent. I love your questions. Those Thank are you. good. Yeah. Oh, that's my already working on next month. Oh, <laughs> that's great. Very yeah. fun. Yeah. So if you were to meet somebody at the very beginning of their pageant journey, which I imagine happens often, uh, mm-hmm. that women come to you and say, okay, I've got this big dream. It might take them many years to eventually become Miss Universe because oftentimes mm-hmm. we compete several times at a local or state level before mm-hmm. you know making it up the ranks. What might you tell them is the sort of framework or maybe the step-by-step process if they know for a fact they want that role that title of Miss Universe? First of all, do you know what the title entails? Mm. If you don't know the job you're going for, how could you possibly get it? Mm. I have teens that didn't know that they're going to be mostly in middle schools. They thought, no, the teen goes to high school and colleges. Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. There are no cute boys with fast cars in your future. They're little (laughs) boys flinging boogers across the auditorium. That's why I don't need you to be sexy. So first, know the job. Secondly, know thyself. Mm -hmm. If you are not a turner, and I meet a lot of girls who can't turn, even after I break things down, I won't let them tell me. I'll give them my baby turning is not going to be your thing. Mm -hmm. So we have to work on the face, the body, the poise, mesmerizing them with the looks and you looking at them. If turning is your thing, Let's work on turns so you rock their world with turns. Know your favorite colors. Hmm. How can somebody possibly tell you what color is going to look good on you when they don't know the day of the event how dark you're going to be? They don't know what the background is going to be on the stage. They can say um, pink is great on you and the background is pink. Yeah. And your skin, you didn't get to get a suntan because you were sick, so now your skin is pink. Mm -hmm. So that pink dress wasn't great. Mm -hmm. But if you love that pink dress, you're going to rock that pink dress. Now, there are exceptions. Mm -hmm. If you are a redhead, you might be aware of some oranges. If you're very, very blonde, you might be leery of some greens. If you're very, very pale, you don't want to do a watercolor. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do anything that washes you out. So there are some basic things, but you have to know something when you're backstage and you look at a girl and you say, wow, she looks good. You should also be able to say, but so do I, baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do I know if you are not tall, you should not be wearing a mermaid. Mm -hmm. You should not be wearing a mermaid dress. It cuts you off at the knee Mm -hmm. and make you look only this tall. You have to be smart enough to say, I'm more on the petite side, so I'm going to get something that elongates me. Mm -hmm. Finally, you cannot let other people get in your head. Mm -hmm. I've met mean girls that confess to beating girls long before they Mm -hmm. get on the stage. Mm -hmm. Long before. I went to an orientation once, and it's a pretty big state. And this girl walked in late. A speaker was speaking. And I tried not to turn around. But I mean, if I tell you, I'm going to say there were 300 people in the room, 200 turned around to talk about this girl. The people around me, I couldn't help but glance. I didn't want to be rude because I'm the next speaker. Mm. I just kind of glanced. She was gorgeous. Mm. The hair, highlights, lowlights, the dress. Now, we're at orientation. She came to work with me two days later. And I was shocked when I opened the door. I said, oh, my God. I remember you from orientation. You rocked that room when you walked in. Everybody was like, how does she do her hair? Where'd she get the dress? Look at her shoes. Look at her makeup. And she said, Lou, let you and I get something straight right away. Mm. I don't need your help to beat the girls that talked about me and looked at me. I need your help to beat the girls that did not look my way. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And she's right. Yes. Those girls are the ones that are like, sorry, you don't exist in my world. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you were in it last year. I don't care. I don't care how much your dress costs. You get no energy. Yeah. Olivia Coppola, when she went to universe, I, tra- I uh, trained 
joined Olivia through her entire journey. Mm. And when she went to Universe and shook hands, there were girls who could not believe that she didn't know who they were. She had no idea. And she had to say, guys, my coach told me not to go on the internet to study you. So I'm going to apologize. I don't know your names, but I'll probably, I'm going to, I promise to try Mm. to remember them. Mm. She didn't. Mm. So she didn't build up in her head who was going to win and who has a great body Mm -hmm. and whose hair and skin and whose eyes. And she didn't do any of that. She Mm. met him and thought, okay, thanks. And that's, (laughs) I love it. Yeah. That's perfect. I it, absolutely. And orientation is sort of where the competition. I mean, of course, we train far before that, but once we're mm-hmm. seeing each other is where the competition really begins and the mindset is so so powerful. Yeah. Absolutely. Even with a director. Right. I just went to a, a country and they spent me they spent quite a bit of money to fly me there to work with their miss. Yeah. And afterward, I always give them a progress report on what I think. And I had to confess, I don't think she's going to win. And their faces, because I'm, 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 the girls will tell you, above all else, I'm honest. Yes. <laughs> I, I answer to a higher authority being a devout Christian. I answer mm-hmm. to a higher authority. Yeah. So I'm not going to lie to you. Mm-hmm. And I, I told the director, I said, she's not going to win. And, and she said, why? She's mm-hmm. gorgeous. I said, when she listens, her face looks like this. <laughs> On television. She cannot be talking to an interviewer th- this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I love my dress. And I love the pageant. It's just fabulous doing the pageant. I've met so many cool people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. It's an incredible dress. And they yeah. knew it. They yeah. slew, were trying to change that. I said, but, guys, that's killer. Forget yeah. walking. Forget her answers. On to, she doesn't make the TV. That's going to start at orientation when the director and everyone is saying hello to the girls and girls are sitting like this, listening. And she's like this. Uh, yes. Uh, I think anyone is going to like, God, she's got to be in the, oh my God. Yeah. But it's like, oh my God. And she was listening and she said, how do I fix that? You can't do that alone. Mm. You have to put your pride aside and actually ask those around you. When it was me and my shoulders and I knew it was keeping me from modeling, every time my mother saw me rounded shoulders, she would pull on her earlobe. That used to be our favorite show. She, so she would say, Lucilla, and she'd pull on her earlobe, and I would notice it up. But I needed help. And if you need help with something, you have to put your pride aside and ask for help. Mm-hmm. So good. Yes, absolutely. Um, So, okay, I got another question for you here that kind of might take you back a bit. So I'm thinking very early on in your career, what was Mm -hmm. something that you felt was like something that you did or someone you met or what did you engage with that made all the difference? Oh, my God, I have so many. Oh, my God. Oh, I, I don't even know how to name I can tell you, um, my agent in New York did not have faith in me, and they kept me for showroom modeling. I was making great money, but anyone that knows showroom modeling and the girls that do the fashion shows are not the same. Mm. When when a designer uses a girl for her showroom or market week, she doesn't put her in the show for New York or Paris. Mm. She doesn't. So I had got trapped into that. So I said, what can I do? I said, I'm going to go to Paris. Because in Paris, they choose the famous girls. And when you come back to New York, you're gold if you work in Paris. Mm. Fashion follows Paris. Italy and New York follow Paris. But my agent in New York said, don't you dare. Don't, you're a showroom model, be happy. Because they didn't, they had me as a showroom model. I was making good money. They were getting 20%. Why push it? Mm -hmm. I told them I was going on vacation and went to Paris. I bought a round trip ticket, first class. I bought a week at the Ritz Carlton because I said, if I don't get an agent, I'm going to do it right. Yeah. Uh, the plane landed at six in the morning. I went to see Marilyn Gautier, the best agent in Paris at that time, at nine o'clock when the doors opened. I walked in and all the bookers were like, we need a black girl, but she's a little overweight. She's, I don't know. She looks kind of weird in that old lady suit. Who, and they were talking so much that Marilyn came out herself and said, Qu'est-ce que c'est? what's going on? 
And they said, there's a girl sitting out there. We're trying to decide. We need someone to send to Pierre Belmont, big French designer. And they want a new black girl. But we need a new black girl. They don't want any of our other girls. But Marilyn, she's overweight. Look at that suit. Marilyn said, come here. She calls me in her office and she says, where are you from? I said, New York. And she said, do you have an agent? I said, yes. And she said, what agent? And I told her. And she said, let me see your portfolio. I said, I don't have one because I'm a showroom model. And she said, you're a liar. You're a liar. You can't be with such a big agent and not have a portfolio. And if I find out you're lying, I'm going to call every other agent and blacklist you. Because we hate girls coming here saying they're with a big agent and they're not. I said, I am. She I'm going to call. I'm going to call that agent right now. What's the name of your booker? And I said, Betty. And she went, oh, you're a good liar. You know the name of the booker. <laughs> so she called. And she called Betty. And she on speakerphone. And she says, bonjour, Betty. I'm here, Marilyn. And Betty was like, Marilyn, come ça va? Ça va? Oh, it's toi. Oh, come see, come ça. Um, she said, I'm sitting here with one of your models. What's your name, darling? And I went, Betty, it's Lou. Now, remember, Betty told me not to go to Paris. Yeah. <laughs> and Betty said, oh, my God, Marilyn, you sent her back to New York with her tail between her legs. We told her not to come to go to Paris and bother anyone. And Marilyn said, wait, wait, wait. She's telling the truth. She's with you. Is she telling the truth about being a showroom model and working every day? And Betty said, well, yes. Is she telling the truth that she works with designers like Bill Blass, Oscar de la Renta, Donna Kent? Well, yes. And, and Marilyn said, Betty, 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 I ask you for new girls all the time. And now I have a diamond, a diamond that just needs to be polished. She had enough courage to come alone. Mm -hmm. She is a star with the designers because she can sell clothes. To work in a showroom, you sell the clothes. To walk in the show, you good press. But to work in a showroom, you sell clothes. This is what I need from you and you don't send me. Betty, I'm going to polish the diamond, but the problem is the diamond will not be coming back to you. Click. Oh. And I remember thinking, oh, oh my God. Oh my God, I just got kicked out of my New York. Oh my God, I got an agent Oh my God, I got kicked. Okay, it gets a little bit better. Marilyn says, I need you to go see Pierre Balmain right now, but there is no way you can go with no portfolio. In the big design houses, they see your portfolio before they ask you to walk. If you don't photograph well, you're not going to make good press photos. So you have to photograph well. And they decide by girls who have lots of tear sheets. Not pictures you paid for. Work out of magazines. That's called tear sheets. And I said, Marilyn, just send me. Just send me, Marilyn. Just send me. And she goes, okay. <laughs> I think you are just crazy enough that I'm going to send you. I don't think they're going to use you. You're overweight for Paris. And you have no portfolio. But afterwards, I'm going to talk to them. And if they seem like they're even interested, I'm going to keep you with the agency before you go. Do I need to put you in a model's apartment? I said, no. She goes, where are you staying? With some man? I said, I'm staying in the Ritz-Carlton. And I brought $10,000 in cash with me. And I want my own apartment because I don't like staying with models. And she said, I thought I liked you. Now I love you. Aww. Take the money to the accountant because you shouldn't walk around the streets of Paris mm -hmm. with $10,000. And I said, I know me. I don't trust the maid at the hotel. I'm at the Ritz-Carlton now. You got to get this. I'm 19 years old. Wow. I go to Pierre Balmain. And this is, this is the point I want to make. Yeah. I walk into Pierre Balmain and every one of my stars, mm. the girls that I have looked up to, yeah. Every one of them, there was Katusha and Fiona, Billy Blair, Pat Cleveland, Munya, um, all the girls that I had just seen in, in every magazine I had studied on the past. They were all sitting there, all women of color. And they looked at me and started to talk. Who is she? Does anyone know who she is? I sat down put on my high heels because models don't walk in high heels in the streets. Mm -hmm. The madame came out. That's the woman in charge of the model. She said, may I have everyone's portfolio? 
she came up to me and she said, your portfolio, s'il vous plaît. And I went, oh, excuse moi, madame. I am so embarrassed. She goes, what, what? I said, my portfolio is at French Vogue. I'm being considered for a cover. The agency should have told you I'm new and I'm being considered for a cover. I am so embarrassed and I apologize for me and my agency. I'm with Marilyn. And she went to Marilyn. Hold on. She runs in the back, but I go to put my flats back on and my coat like I'm really embarrassed, yeah. like I'm a star. They should have never sent me without telling you I'm a cover girl. Yeah. So you got to act the part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the assistant designer peeps out and he goes, she was Marilyn and maybe French Vogue. She's a little heavy, but tell her to wait. I want to see her in an outfit. Wow. When the madame came out and said, wait, you try on an outfit. That yeah. was a snapping point that I then realized. All of you are in here like I'm in here. All of you are interviewing for that position like I'm interviewing for that position. You are not better than me. Yeah. I am one of you. And I remember what someone said, when you meet a celebrity, you are either part of them, you're a celebrity yourself, or you're a fan. Mm -hmm. They don't have in between. Right. A fan asks for an interview, I, an um, autograph. I have never asked for an autograph, yeah. ever, from mm -hmm. anyone. Mm -hmm. And that was the point for me that mm -hmm. I went, okay. Wow. Wow, what a coming of age moment, too, to just step into that power and to truly say to yourself, now I could sit here and, and just, you know, kind of melt down into the shadows, or I could step into what I know I'm called to do, this greater purpose, what's my mission. I knew when they put me in the outfit, I would have them because that's what yeah. I do. Yeah. I was in everybody's showroom. Yeah. I could take off a coat. I could do a pose. I'd look when I walk at you. I knew if I could get in the outfit. Yeah. And when I went back to Maryland right afterward. She told me, she goes, I never want to know what you did to get this show because I will not be a party to whatever you did. I have never had a girl overweight with no portfolio land a major job, never in the history of me opening an agency. Wow. She goes, you, you got an agent. You're going to star because you are extremely overweight. You're going to shoot pictures so you get some pictures and you're going to go on castings every day. And I stayed in Paris for six months. Wow. And then I went back to New York, left my big agent and went with a small agent that Marilyn sent me to. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. What a cool opportunity. Oh my gosh. Wow, Lou. Well, I just want to take a moment to honor you for everything well, that you are doing in the pageant industry the it's truly in the last several really the last decade or so that you have been actively involved the industry has radically changed and i know that that is because of your Thank presence and i also know that you are a vessel from god that you are doing this from a place of yeah and and the clients of mine that have worked with you come back with that report as well that it's truly the depth of your heart and your spirit that you bring into your work and that shines Don't so make brightly. Don't I'm an old lady and the makeup gets in my wrinkles. <laughs> Thank you. <all. laughs> oh, but so true. So I just want to honor you for your work that is really making a major, major difference in the industry. So for the women that are interested in working with you, where can they find you? How do they contact you? My website, you can go to it anytime and email me. The name of my company is A Loop, A-L-U-P, which stands for A Loop Production. And you can email me, contact Lou, call me at any time. I take appointments full time. My app is doing incredible. I have an app on Android and iPhone called Modelversity. Think of Modeling University or put in my name, Lou Sierra. And it tells you how to win pageants. And it tells you how to get a modeling career. And I'm doing some great things I'm very excited about Ooh. in the future. Oh. Very excited about. Oh, great, good. I have your app. I do love it. It's like so cool Thank having you. Lou right there in your pocket. Just boom, boom. Yeah, like. <laughs> and just go to it and remember the yep. turns and the walk. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. It's so great. So 
Well, and we're going to link up all of that in the show notes and under the video okay. so people will have access to all of that. They can get straight to right. you there. Um, and then you will also be, we're so excited that you will be at the beauty brand Believe yes. Expo. Yeah. So Love. people can meet you in person there uh, in, in Washington. And mm -hmm. I, I will have all the details of how people can access that as well. And I know it's a really amazing opportunity to just have you right in front. And I imagine, are you also taking appointments during that weekend as well? Absolutely. Okay, great. Absolutely. That's what I come Perfect. in for. Absolutely. Oh, that's so great. To so they'll have, oh, it's mm -hmm. going to be great. Good. Well, thank you again, Lou, for being on thank you this for podcast. Having me and thank Absolutely. you for having such a great show. I love it. I saw some other shows. Absolutely. What a great, great, great thing. Thank you for having me. Isn't she incredible? Oh my gosh. If you want to meet Lou in person, you heard us talking about this. The beauty brand Believe Expo is coming up on March 10th of 2018. And it's an opportunity for all types of pageant women. I mean, I mean like all ages and all systems come together, hundreds of women come together in one place for one day to just really double down to learn from a variety of experts in all areas of pageantry. It's such a fun opportunity to just network with other pageant women. We have a great time interacting, but also to learn from the best of the best like Lou all in one place. So that is taking place in Bellingham, Washington, which is near Seattle. It's like close by Seattle. So think of it, the, the Pacific Northwest there. And it's just that one day, March 10th. All of the details are at beautybrandbelieve.com. I am a sponsor of this. That's why I fully support it. I went last year for the first time. I believe this is their third year now. So it's just getting better and better and better. Totally awesome. I would love to meet you there. So again, check it out at beautybrandbelieve.com. Now, if you loved this episode, would you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel? And hey, listen, share this with somebody that you know it would light them up. There's so much great stuff in this episode. And if you know anyone that's competed in pageants before, this is awesome information from top to bottom. So please share it up. Leave me a comment below to let me know what your favorite part was. And I'll see you next week on Win a Pageant Wednesday. Bye for now.